Welcome into a special bonus episode of Stone Cold Shows. I'm Brandon Strange. I'm joined by senior content contributor Charlie Polillo and SportsMap.com editor Josh Jordan. The audio version of this podcast is available at places like Apple and Spotify and wherever you get your pods. And those links are in the description. Guys, no music, no cold open, right to it. Uh, stop me if you heard this one before. The Astros have traded for Justin Verlander at the trade deadline. Uh, Drew Gilbert, Ryan Clifford to the Mets uh, for Justin Verlander and a whole bunch of bags of cash. Uh, guys, what do you think about this trade? So technical clarity first. This is not officially Stone Cold Stroh's episode number 35, right? No, nope. this, is, nope. bonus this is not a numerical. It's, it's completely bonus episode. No numerical tie-ins. Just a so very you, happy coincidence then. Yes. Uh, look, we'll get to the potential back end down the road ramifications. But if you are an Astros fan, if you are an Astro, you should be giddy. You should be stupefied and delighted over the perfect storm that came together, enabling this trade to happen. The Mets falling apart and selling off and Verlander having the no trade clause. And in the end, deciding it's back to Houston. If you're going to deal me, the Astros number one prospect is not a super duper star. Can't miss prospect. May Drew Gilbert go on and prosper and have a fine career. Ryan Clifford's been banging away in single a, he turned 20 years old a month ago. No one's thinking this is the next Juan Soto or anything like that. And there is a transactional cost. You weren't going to get him for free, but this is pretty damn close. With Daddy Warbucks sending if the option vests for 25, all told more than $50 million, the Astros get Verlander at a rate pro rata under $20 million per year. If they could have had Verlander at $20 million per year, he'd have never been a Met, right? He'd have re-signed here. He goes there for over $43 million per year. The Mets spectacularly, colossally implode in six years. And one day after acquiring Verlander the first time, we'll see if past his prologue and all that. But if you're an Astros fan, look, I am a, a hardcore skeptic and cynic. But if you're an Astros fan, you should be beside yourself. And I am, Charlie. I'm super excited about this deal, especially the way JP France pitched this week again. So you add Verlander to this depth. Hopefully, you get, you know, Fromber and, you know, they're pushing back Christian Javier a day because he responded well to that. So now maybe we see some six man rotation here going forward. Verlander, I mean, he's been fabulous in his last five starts. So, you know, after dealing with some injuries, kind of a, a slow start getting going, he's been terrific. And yeah, you hate to lose Drew Gilbert. That's unfortunate. Ryan Clifford, I know a lot of people are losing their minds over that. He could go on to be a great player. At the end of the day, he is an 11th round pick. So in the Astros system. So, you know, there's something to that. I think, I think they got a great deal. Kudos to Dana Brown, Jim Crane for getting this thing done. And I couldn't be more excited. They're, they're in, in it to win it here. And you could probably thank the Rangers a little bit for this getting done because the Astros felt the heat a little bit. They had to respond. And it was Dana Brown playing his cards close to the vest. He was still looking for starting pitching. Houston, you got Justin Verlander. Uh, so many angles on this. It's just a matter of how long we choose to, to hang out and discuss. But I guess let's address specifically 2023 Justin Verlander. Josh, you alluded to it. right? He gets hurt out of the gate doesn't make his Mets debut until May 4th. So to some extent, a second spring training starting his season while everyone else has been playing for a month. First nine starts, terrible. 4.85 earned run average, strikeout rate down, walk rate up, home run problems. Well, since then, Verlander has hit his stride. You can break it down at different points. Over his last nine starts, 1.95 ERA over his last seven starts, 1.49 ERA, the hits per innings ratio, back where we're accustomed to. Uh, over the last seven starts, the OPS against Justin Verlander is 519. So Verlander over the last seven starts, not one or two starts, over seven starts, he has made opposition lineups look like every batter against him is worse than Martin Maldonado who may have finally made a real contribution to the 2023 Astros, as I'm sure one of you guys will flesh out. Uh, well, so that Verlander tumbled over the hill this year, it may have looked that way his first month, month and a half with the Mets. But even with all that Justin Verlander has accomplished, surefire Hall of Famer, 250 wins that he just got in his last Mets outing, um, 
he still perhaps felt a little pressure pitching in New York to that contract after being unavailable the first month of the season, whatever went into it, along with maybe just some crappy pitching. Well, he's gotten over it. The Astros reacquire a bona fide front to the rotation starter. And one more delicious angle on this. He should be fresh and ready to go in that first Astro start because he pitched for the Mets at City Field Sunday, left to a standing ovation with everyone thinking he'll probably get traded. Well, his first start's going to be against the Yankees at Yankee <laughs> Stadium. Some things you just can't script. That is a delicious morsel of a tidbit there. And uh, I'm to going. Your po- I, the, you're going. Oh, man. Just had to rub it in. L- let's, let's talk about the Martin Maldonado bit because you brought it up. Uh, according to Chandler Rome, uh, Martin Maldonado had been in touch with Justin Verlander for the past, past few days as trade negotiations progressed. Maldonado said it got more realistic at 930 today. He found out the trade was happening when Verlander sent him a text this afternoon that said, let's F and go. Uh, so like, Hey, Martin Maldonado was productive for you this week. You can't say, uh, you can't, you know what? He's slander proof, at least for the next 24 hours. Uh, let's talk about the implications of the trade though. Who's going out because Drew Gilbert was who Houston had hoped would be the, one of their outfielders of the future. Dana Brown, we remember earlier in the season, kind of put the challenge out there for Drew to, uh, you know, bat his way onto the ball club. That wasn't necessarily realistic. And, and this, uh, this year, but what does this mean for the future of the Astros outfield? Cause there's a couple implications here. One is it sure looks like the Astros really need to lock up Kyle Tucker. And the other seems to be that Chaz McCormick's value in this organization just skyrocketed. Yeah. Now, of course, McCormick is already closer to 30 than 25. So he's not some rising young stud, but a couple of months at the level at which he's played, he doesn't need to be a 900 OPS guy to be a really good major league regular. Uh, the Tucker question sits out there. He's under Astros control through 2025, so there's not an emergency level. of You have to get it done now with Tuck. You have to get it now done with Tuck. And the third outfielder, you know, you can acquire one of those in myriad ways. Maybe over the next couple of years, Jacob Melton or Colin Barber emerges. Uh, maybe Bryce Matthews, the first-round draft choice, winds up an outfielder. Or maybe you sign a free agent or make a trade. You know, coming up with a third outfielder isn't the toughest thing in the world. And oh, by the way, that's slotting Jordan Alvarez as DH, right? That third outfield spot, if we want to call him a left fielder full-time, it's pretty well covered for the next few years. And Andrew Gilbert, who's a very nice prospect, but, you know, he's older than Julio Rodriguez. He's four months younger. That's it. Four months younger than Corbin Carroll, who's probably the National League Rookie of the Year. So there are late bloomers, and it's not like Drew Gilbert is a gray beard, but he turns 23 years old next month. So it's not like he's 1920 that day. The Astros traded their version of Ellie De La Cruz. No, no, they didn't. He's the number one or was the Astros' number one prospect because he's a nice prospect, prospect and because the Astros' farm system is for hunger. Drew Gilbert would not be one of the top seven or eight Orioles prospects. Would be not one of the top six or seven Dodgers prospects or top five, six Rangers prospects. You know, it's much more likely they traded away, oh, Eric Anthony or Cameron Drew or A.J. Reed or Seth Beer than the next would have been Astro superstar. And you are in a very special error here already. Six years, four World Series appearances, two World Series title. That stacks pretty well favorably. You know, it's not one of the three or four greatest runs in the history of Major League Baseball. Well, what if you happen to add another World Series or two? over this season and conceivably the next two with Justin Verlander. So yeah, that there may be reckoning coming down the road. So be it. This is not some wild hair shot in the dark, one in a billion lottery ticket you're buying. You just scared the crap out of the the Rangers and the Orioles and, and the Rays. And the Astros are back in the business of their chance of winning the World Series is as good as anyone else this year, at least coming out of the American League. You know, the Braves may just be that much better than everyone else in the National League, which gives them better odds at this point. Uh, but the Astros are on that top line again for 2023 with everyone else. And uh, the late boxing referee, Mills Lane, let's get it on! <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think McCullers being hurt plays into this too. I think, you know, Garcia blowing out his arm with Tommy John that – Dana Brown said that they don't expect those guys to be ready when next season starts. So I feel like this trade has a lot to do with next year too. So Dana Brown looking ahead a little bit and especially the money, they are not having to pay him nearly as much as he's getting paid or he should be getting paid by one team. The Mets are kicking in so much cash. 
I'm sure Jim Crane was was dancing when he found out how little he was going to have to pay Justin Verlander. So, you know, you mortgage a little bit of the future, but I mean, to have a shot at another World Series to seem in a, a true dynasty with three championships, I think you had to take that chance. And I'm excited to watch it. The, the fun factor, the watchability factor of the Astros when Justin Verlander on the team is it just goes up an extra level, in my opinion. It was interesting reading uh, or seeing Dusty's comments uh, yesterday kind of regarding like his observations of uh, all of the moves happening and him saying felt a little, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I forget the exact wording, but disillusioned or a little disheartened because, you know, the other teams were making moves. The Astros hadn't made moves yet. Uh, had they not done this move, I too would have been a little disheartened just because you do feel like they need another piece to put you over the edge. And the fact that the Astros have made, we've seen this before. We've seen them trade for Justin Verlander at the deadline and him put them over the edge. Uh, the fact that Justin Verlander, uh, held that no trade clause and used it uh, to maneuver to get here and to make this deal happen, uh, I think says something about his faith in this organization, how they're constructed and his, you know, their ability to repeat. Um, and so let's, uh, you know, we can't, we can't belabor this. Unfortunately, uh, we're all on the time clock here, but let's do, let's do this. Uh, let's make a special bottom line question of the week for this, because uh I, w I was going to ask this, um, should this happen or, you know, uh, should this trade happen? It's keeping this, these questions in my back pocket. So let's do them right now. Does JV retire an Astro now? And does he go into the hall of fame with an H on his cap? Well, interesting question. Uh, I would spec the odds favor that he does retire as an Astro caveat. If he has any interest when he clearly is way over the hill, but if the Tigers wanted to bring him back for one more year for among other reasons, hey, put that put that D on your hat when you get to go into Cooperstown. Um, they win another World Series, and he furthers the Verlander legend in Houston. Boy, three to zero. Right? He did he didn't go to World Series with Detroit, didn't win them, but but did go. The overall body of work, eleven seasons versus under five here when you throw out 20 and, and 21. Um, so if you think the Astros are going to win another World Series with Justin Verlander on the team, uh, that to me might be the the tipping point. As of yeah. now, it going, I think, as a Tiger. Uh, yeah, I agree with Charlie. I, I think it kind of depends on what happens over the next year or two. But, you know, if, if they're close and they're competing for championships, I, I think he will go in as an Astro. And I think a lot of people are going to remember him as one, too, because of the World Series here over the last the runs they've had the last several years. You know, whatever's kind of last in your mind, you kind of remember. And then him going to New York. So all the national media and fans, they keep track of Verlander. And then him leaving New York and coming back to Houston. I think that's going to be fresh in people's minds, especially if they're going, you know, making runs over the next two years. So, yeah, I, I think he does. And uh, I do wonder who's going to be the number one starter here going forward. If it's Fromber or Justin, that that's one I've been kind of thinking about. That's an open yeah. audition. Let's see how Fromber builds back up from his little injury hiccups or, or just tail off in performance. Uh, and one more thing, it, it eases the pressure, the burden, not only for the pitchers themselves, but in the Astros decision-making, you bump down Christian Javier, you bump down Hunter Brown and Josh, as you alluded to earlier, you now have the six man rotation options, France, of course, has been a mainstay. If he hits a little bit of a wall, you have a buffer against that now. And Urquidy uh, joining. So, uh, uh, wow, what a, what a day. The, the Thunderbolt uh, referred to in episode 34. It strikes uh, ahead of episode 35, probably when Monday rolls around, starring, again, number 35. Well, we will uh, get to, uh, well, that's a great preview. That's a good way to end this episode. So make sure you join us uh, next Monday for uh, episode 35 of Stone Cold Strows. That's going to be it for this episode. And as always, go Strows. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. I had to.